Hello, I'm Jim Volker, CEO here at Whiting Petroleum, and I'm pleased to be here with you today. Today, our topic is safety, and safety is the goal at Whiting for all of our employees, contractors, and our neighbors. Whiting is involved in many important projects, but no project or the income they create is as important as the safety of our employees and our contractors. So while you're working on any Whiting job, please keep that in mind. You know, we have many people who work for us, and it's important not only that they know what to do, but how to do it safely. Thank you. At Whiting Oil & Gas, we take our business very seriously, starting with our commitments to environment, health, and safety. Paying close attention to how we use our equipment and to the safeguards we put in place contributes to our overall success. It's up to all of us to do our part so that everyone can succeed. This program will help you get started, giving you a basic understanding of what to do and where to turn for help. Contractors, their employees, and any subcontractors brought to the site must comply with all government safety rules, including those published by OSHA, DOT, and EPA. In addition, contractors must be familiar with their own company's safety policies and with Whiting's safety requirements. At Whiting, we expect contractors and their employees to share our concern for the personal safety of our employees and our neighbors. Whiting strictly enforces our policy prohibiting the possession and or use of firearms, ammunition, explosives, deadly weapons, alcoholic beverages, and controlled substances either on your person or in your vehicle while on Whiting property. As a contractor, it is your responsibility to take all precautions for your own safety and the safety of your employees, subcontractors, and the public while performing work on or visiting any Whiting location. We expect you to be knowledgeable of and follow your company's environmental, health, and safety policies. Should a conflict exist between your company's policy and Whiting's EHS policy, we expect you to follow the more stringent policy. Personal protective equipment is a fact of life and is your last line of defense against personal injury. To stay safe, Whiting requires personal protective equipment at all times. At minimum, hard hats, steel-toed footwear, and safety glasses with side shields must be worn when working on or visiting a Whiting location. Also, you must perform a PPE hazard assessment to identify any additional PPE requirements. Hearing and applicable face, body, or eye protection must also be worn where job hazards exist or are required by your PPE hazard assessment. Contractors must provide these personal protective equipment items for their employees and must ensure that any subcontractors brought to a Whiting location comply with these requirements. It is up to you to find out what kind of personal protective equipment you need for the job. Something that you may not have thought of is that the type of clothing you wear may create a hazard. For example, synthetic fabrics such as nylon can increase the potential for static sparks, which in some cases have caused fires at wellheads and tank batteries. Plus, in the unlikely event that you're involved in a flash fire, synthetic fabrics can increase the severity of your burn injuries. Check to find out if your job requires flame retardant clothing. If not, we recommend 100% cotton. To do your job safely and efficiently, keep yourself physically and mentally fit, and stay on task when you're on the job. Fun is fun, but practical jokes and fooling around are better left until after work. Medications can impair your judgment, so tell your supervisor when you're taking medication. Some activities may need to be adjusted to suit potential side effects of your medication. You will not be permitted to enter or remain on any whiting site if you're in possession of or under the influence of alcohol or drugs, whether prescribed or not. Smoking is permitted only in designated areas, and smokers must use care when disposing of smoking materials. Respiratory equipment may be required for work in a wide variety of situations, not just for sour locations. Hair length cannot obstruct your vision or have the potential to get caught in moving parts. Facial hair must be trimmed, if necessary, to allow for a good seal 
when respiratory equipment is used. Housekeeping is a safety issue. It's simple, really. If you use it, put it away. If you make a mess, clean it up. Pick up any dirty rags and trash and dispose of them properly. Keep doorways and roads free of obstructions for safe access. All tools, personal protective equipment, and specialized equipment are the responsibility of the contractor and must be in good working condition. If a tool or piece of equipment isn't working properly or just doesn't look right, don't use it and report it to your supervisor. We can reduce hazards and downtime by staying on top of situations that can cause future problems. You have the right to refuse to perform any job or shut down a job at any time because of a safety concern. Do not perform any task that would place you in a potentially dangerous situation. If you have made the decision to refuse to do work that may be dangerous, immediately notify your employer or supervisor to explain the reasoning behind your decision. The contractor and a whiting rep must investigate the situation and take the necessary action to correct the danger. Make sure that hazardous materials and wastes are stored, transported, and disposed of appropriately. Site-specific waste management plans are available. Please work to prevent spills and other releases. In the event of a spill, isolate the source, contain it, and clean it up if it is safe to do so and you have been properly trained. Immediately report it to both your supervisor and to your whiting rep. Whiting asks that contractors do their part to eliminate and reduce wastes and to conserve both energy and water. Local environmental or community issues can occur wherever we operate, so we must understand them and take the needed steps to successfully work together. You are responsible for the waste you generate, so please take it with you when you leave the location. If you have any questions regarding environmental issues, ask your Whiting representative or a member of Whiting's Environmental, Health and Safety Department. Some of Whiting's production contains hydrogen sulfide. This gas is highly toxic and can kill within seconds by paralyzing the respiratory system. A facility is considered to be sour when the H2S content of the gas is 10 parts per million or greater. There are three key points to keep in mind when working in an H2S environment. Detection. Either a continuous or personal monitor alerts you to changes in H2S concentrations. You may need to wear a personal monitor for your job. Poisonous gas warning signs are posted where the potential for H2S content is 10 parts per million or greater. You must have H2S training and implement safe work policies for your workers when at any whiting sour site. Protection is required when H2S is present in an area. Either an approved supplied air or self-contained breathing apparatus must be worn when maximum exposure limits are exceeded. Whiting EHS policies identify H2S concentrations and maximum time exposures. Ask your Whiting representative about the H2S concentrations found in any area where you are working. It is important to remember that if you come upon someone who has collapsed because of H2S exposure, you must resist the urge to perform an immediate rescue. Being a hero without first alerting someone else and wearing the proper respiratory gear can turn you into the victim. Only perform a rescue when another employee is ready to suit up in an air pack to rescue you if there is a problem. At Whiting, we put a lot of our energy into safety. Our staff and contractors form a dedicated group of people committed to maximizing production and lowering operating costs while at the same time maintaining a safe and environmentally responsible operation. This company-wide commitment involves everyone from supervisors to employees to our management team and it includes contractors like you. In other words, it means everyone. When planning and monitoring a job, take the time to understand and follow up on health, safety, and environmental issues. 
Be sure that everyone understands and follows the company policies and regulations that apply to that particular job. Get the training and equipment needed to complete the job safely and efficiently. As a contractor, Whiting expects you to train your employees. Every contractor's pre-job planning should ensure that its employees are properly trained for their specific job. Remain sensitive to these concerns and help our company improve health, safety, and environmental matters that affect your work. Worksite inspections are carried out on a regular basis to help identify all potential hazards that can lead to unsafe work conditions. In other words, if you see it, fix it, and then tell your supervisor what you've done. If you can't fix it, report it to your supervisor immediately. There are specific inspection requirements for different industries. Contractors must know what inspections are required and make sure that they are included in your work practices. Contractors must provide whiting with material safety data sheets for any hazardous materials brought into a whiting facility. These materials include paint, solvents, lubricants, pesticides, and other chemicals. Workers using these materials must ensure that they are in appropriate containers with proper labels. Please be aware that whiting may have other chemicals on location and copies of our material safety data sheets are available. It is your responsibility to protect yourself, your employees and subcontractors from exposure to dangerous materials. When using a vehicle on the job, there are several key points to remember. All vehicles must be in safe working condition and driven in a safe and courteous manner. Always wear your seatbelt, even on the lease roads. When driving by workers, neighbors, or children on the side of the road, slow down and limit passing on loose gravel as dust and rocks can cause poor visibility. Observe all posted speed limits both on and off Whiting property and stay on the right hand side of the road, especially at intersections, corners, and at the crest of a hill. We want to know what's going on out there. Unless you tell us about an incident, there is no way for us to take steps to eliminate potential hazards. So, for everyone's safety, if there's anything you're aware of that could cause a potential incident, let us know. Contractors must provide first aid supplies, have trained personnel on site, and have plans for emergency situations. In a medical emergency, contractors are responsible for providing primary first aid for their employees. Whiting may also provide assistance depending on the nature of the emergency. All unsafe acts, conditions, incidents, and near misses, including such things as injuries, motor vehicle accidents, spills, releases, and even landowner complaints must be reported to both your supervisor and Whiting representative for investigation and follow-up. After providing a report of the incident to your Whiting rep, we expect you to conduct a full investigation to determine exactly what happened and, most importantly, how you plan to ensure that such an incident will not be repeated. Remember, the goal of accident investigation is fact-finding, not fault-finding. Please be prompt, thorough, and consistent in your investigations and implementation of corrective actions. We never know when an emergency will occur, so always be prepared for one. Have a phone and know who to call. You must always be able to communicate, so always have a communication device like a cellular phone or mobile radio. In the event of an emergency, stop your work and get out of the area to make sure that you are not a second casualty. Immediately notify the proper authority, then give assistance to other workers if it is safe, and secure the surrounding area if necessary. Respond if it is safe to do so within the limits of your training. Your last priority is to protect your equipment. If you are uncertain about your role in an emergency, ask your supervisor. Whiting has prepared emergency response plans, so in the event of an emergency, your Whiting rep will take the necessary steps to implement that plan. One of the best ways to make a positive difference is to let everyone know what you're doing and keep everyone in the loop. To maintain safe operations, effective communication between all levels of workers is essential. 
Before starting work in or on any work site, your whiting rep will give you specific instructions about operation hazards, safe work practices specific to the work site, and, if necessary, a work permit. Contractors are expected to hold pre-job and tailgate safety meetings to ensure all workers understand what work will take place, as well as any specific work permit conditions and precautions that are needed for the job to proceed safely. It is important to note that you should not wait for the next safety meeting to bring a safety concern to your supervisor. Do it immediately. Good communication is essential for a safe workplace. Work permits are one method used to communicate. These permits identify the work to be done, any hazards involved, precautions to be taken, and to inform everybody as to who is in control of the job or site. Before any work begins, determine if a hot work or confined space work permit is required. All hazards and precautions must be considered before any job begins. Limitations must be agreed upon between a contractor and the permit issuer. Permit issuers, job supervisors, and workers all must be aware of the tasks to be completed and the permit requirements. Talk to your whiting rep about the type of permit you'll need for your particular job. All states where whiting operates have one call or call before you dig programs. When planning to dig, call your state one call program 24 to 72 hours before the start of any excavation. The lead time can vary according to each state's law, but it is the law, so always call before you dig. Whiting has a strict lockout tagout policy in compliance with OSHA standards. Lockout tagout simply means that all hazardous energy sources to the tool or machine, such as electricity, gas, or liquid, must be locked in the off position before any maintenance is performed. The lock and key used for a lockout tagout procedure should never be used for any other purpose. Your tag should have your name and company on them as well as why the equipment is locked out. Use the lockout tagout procedure whenever possible. Only use the tagout method when the lockout method is unavailable. Remember, tags do not prevent the equipment from being started up, they are only warnings. So, if you use a tag only, it is recommended that you exercise extra caution. For more information on the lockout tagout policy, please consult the Whiting Safety Manual. Well, that about wraps it up. Now it's up to you. Here at Whiting, our goal is to be an injury and accident-free workplace. Working together, we will hit that goal and everyone will benefit. As a part of this safety orientation, you will be asked to sign either a form or an attendance sheet stating that you understand everything we've gone over today. If you don't understand, or if you're uncomfortable about any aspect, get someone to go over it with you before you sign. The Whiting Safety Program includes more detailed guidelines and information to assist you with safe operating requirements. Please discuss any questions or concerns you have with the Whiting person in charge. My best words of wisdom? If you're ever unsure about anything, stop what you're doing and find out what you need to know. It only takes a second to make a decision, but the effects of that decision could last a lifetime. My name is Jack Brown, Manager of Whiting's Environmental Health and Safety Program. Thank you for watching this safety video today. You are probably asking what to do with all this information in this video and how can I do my job safely. Well, let's summarize how all these items come together and form the core of Whiting's safety program. First, as your team approaches the work location, you will be required to hold a tailgate safety meeting. During the tailgate safety meeting, each employee must contribute toward identifying the hazards associated with each task. Further, you will need to determine if additional permits are needed, such as a permit for hot work or confined space entry. Second, make sure you have the proper PPE and it is in good working condition. Third, everyone on your team will need to implement the lockout tagout procedures. Make sure your individual lock is placed on the proper switch or valve. Fourth, stay alert. Don't be complacent and follow procedures. Don't get in a rush or take any shortcuts. Finally, if you sense something is wrong, don't be afraid to speak up. 
Direct any questions to your supervisor or the nearest Whiting employee. Thank you again and please remember to work safely.